<laughs> and uh, also later he assisted his spiritual master, his Sachinandana Maharaj, uh, for several years. He has studied at the University of Zurich, um, pedagogy, uh, psychopathology, and interology. And currently he's wor working as a social educator for teenagers and also doing parental coaching. And so we are very happy that he is now here. And uh, so please um, have a nice day here. Just want to ask you, gibt es jemand, der kein Englisch versteht und eine deutsche Übersetzung braucht? So the, the class should be in English? Uh, yeah, if that's... Uh -huh. <laughs> I, ich bin davon ausgegangen, dass er auf Deutsch ist. There's someone, this or so we Just, are, if yeah. someone doesn't understand German, uh, sorry, someone doesn't understand German, yes. Sprechen alle Deutsch? Dann geben wir auch die meisten kein Deutsch. Someone who, who doesn't under, understand German? Okay. Um, uh, wer versteht kein Englisch? Okay, English is fine. Actually, I'm more used to giving classes in English, so it's good. Oh, could I have an English Bhagavad Gita? Yes. And please also come a little forward, a bit closer. Thank you. So Hare Krishna, dear devotees, dear guests. Um, I haven't given a Sunday class for a long time, so I'm a little nervous. <laughs> um, is someone here the first time in Hare Krishna temple? Okay, welcome. Totally new to Krishna, uh, spirituality, Krishna consciousness. So, so. Uh, to spiritually not, but to Krishna, Krishna consciousness. consciousness. Yeah, the Sunday classes are the most challenging classes because you have people who are new kind of to our philosophy and then we have devotees who also they know the philosophy they want to hear something so i give my best to provide something for all of you <laughs> okay we will sing a short song i guess most of you know it jai radha Mado.
actually when I ask if someone's the first time to temple, haven't looked to this side. Any or any of you is first time here, or you've been here in the temple before? Okay, wonderful. I will just start off before um, the uh, Sunday talk. I will say a few prayers. Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnana Shalakaya Jakshurun Miritangena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bistang Stapitang in a Bhutale Sayam Rupa Kadamam Dadati Satadam Dikam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Adaita Gadar Har Shiva Sari Gaur Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So, the, I don't know how the theme of the class was conveyed. I was asked what is my theme, and I call it spirituality and drawers. So if you hear spirituality, everyone knows drawers. You, like there in the little shelf, there are drawers to pull out. So what do drawers have in common with spirituality? Any ideas in the audience? Different type of religions which we can put into these drawers. Okay. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Any other ideas? Some ideas what drawers have in common with spirituality. Okay, let's see. Oh, yes, please. Um, it just came to my mind that when we need something, we just took it out from the drawer. It's it's always there. Uh -huh. uh, they are um, sort uh, like sorted. It's organized. It's kind organized. Of. Okay. Yeah, and if you need something, then we just we pull it out. We put it out. Okay. First drawer or second drawer. Okay. There, mm -hmm. with necessary things for our spiritual development. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So I leave it by there now. I still want to leave that question in your minds. I will start off the class with um, a quote from, or a verse from Bhagavad Gita. Also in our tradition, it said you, you start the talk by speaking something from a sacred literature. It's you, you kind of refer to the, the spiritual potency of that literature. You ask for blessings in this way, and you, you speak on the basis of that uh, text also. And I'm speaking of um, Bhagavad Gita, 18th chapter. It's called The Perfection of Renunciation. The verse is 55. I'll first chant the Sanskrit. Bhaktyamam abhijanati avanyas chasvi tattvataha tatomam tattvato gyadva vishate tat anantaram Now we hear the translation. One can understand me as I am. Here Krishna is speaking. Krishna is saying, one can understand me as I am, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead only by devotional service. And when one is in full consciousness of me by such devotion, he can enter into the Kingdom of God. I read the first paragraph of the purport by Shri Prabhupada. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna and his plenary portions cannot be understood by mental speculation nor by the non-devotees. If anyone wants to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he has to take to pure devotional service under the guidance of a pure devotee. Otherwise, the truth of the Supreme Personality of Godhead will always be hidden. As already stated in Bhagavad Gita 725, 
Naham Prakasha Sarvasya. He is not revealed to everyone. No one can understand God simply by erudite scholarship or mental speculation. Only one who is actually engaged in Krishna consciousness and devotional service can understand what Krishna is. University degrees are not helpful. <clears throat> so, here we have um, the, the fact of Abhijanati in Sanskrit, how to understand, how to understand divinity, how to understand God, how to understand Krishna. Is he is said how to understand him in tattva, in truth. That's a Sanskrit tattva is a is a kind of a, a word depicting truth or, or, or reality. So to, to understand reality, it's said here one needs to perform bhakti. It's said here Bhaktiam. Offer devotion to me. There also the word bhakti yoga comes from what we in our Hare Krishna tradition we um, we practice bhakti yoga and we also try to offer bhakti yoga to all the people who are interested in it. And bhakti yoga is the the yoga yoga means connection to divinity to God, which we want to do with love, with devotion, with with a feeling of of taking shelter, of surrendering to a, a higher strength to, to God who is much more strong and who can then actually reveal this knowledge then to us. So that is here being said in the Bhagavad Gita. And as Prabhupada writes that he makes the point that to understand these spiritual topics and this tattva, it's not possible to understand it with our own power of our own mind. That's, uh, he speaks of mental speculation that when we use our mind and try to understand these spiritual things, um, it will. Our mind, we are too limited in our mind to understand these deep and also very complex spiritual um, topics. And he also says a university degree is not helpful. And um, and a side note. I studied uh, in my side subject, I studied Indology, and I can confirm the mainstream Indologists, they got it all wrong. <laughs> to be make a strong statement. There are very nice people there. Some of them are very inspired also by the Vedic spirituality, but some of them, oof, you really think, you, there, it's just a very strong effort to understand these spiritual texts with our with our mind and it doesn't work. So coming back to the drawers, I was specifically thinking of mental drawers. You know, if you look inside, it's a human nature that we have many, many depends. Some people have less, some people have more, many drawers in our in our mind, in our in our head, where when things come to us, what we perceive outside, we have the tendency quickly. Oh, that's the that's the funny man with the strange hat drawer, and that's the friendly person at the cashier drawer. Uh, this is my my father, my mother drawer. This is my wife drawer. So we have a tendency to put things into to drawers. And you can, um, speaking in English, we speak of the mind. In German, there is not a, there's not a very good translation for the word mind. We, in, we speak about it in the scriptures as Geist, but with Christian influence, it's often a bit confusing. What Geist? What's that? It's, it comes from the Sanskrit word Manas. It, in English, it um, developed into the, the word mind. Um, it's the whole uh, subtle mental functioning you know, of, our, of, our brain, of our brain, of our brain, of our being, and you can actually say the mind is a meaning maker, or it makes it makes drawers. And um, in the Vedic scriptures, there is also one refer uh, reference to that, which also uh, Sri Prabhupada often uh, uh, mentions that 
especially in, in like uh, walks with him, he's, he quotes that Sanskrit, Sanskrit um, sentence, man, um, Atmavan Manyate Jagat. So Atma is often known as to be the soul, the, the, the Atman. But it can also um, be translated as the mind. It can also sometimes also used for the body. Mainly it's it's to the context in which it's used. So Atma va Atma Vat, like Vat is a suffix means like. Atma Vat, the mind like the the no. Like, sorry, I'm I'm confusing something. The um, yeah, it's like what like what is inside in the atma, which is the mind. Manyate thinks, jagat, the world outside. So we 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 perceive everything outside in the way what what we have inside. So I have a good example. When I was in my teens, I used to be a very passionate skateboarder. So I used to go around Zurich, and whatever steps, rails, uh, stones, like stone borders on the side, it was all for skateboarding. I could all see, oh, there you can make cool tricks. Another person who was not into skateboarding, he wouldn't see that. So because my skateboarding was in here, I saw everything in the realm of skateboarding. Another person who is into maybe design would see, oh, this steps are not designed very nicely, could make it better. Someone who's not into it at all wouldn't even, wouldn't even pay attention to it. Or someone who likes nice cars, he sees where are the nice cars driving down the street. So that's, it's inside, so that reflects to him. But there's more to that, which is also a bit to the topic I'm bringing, is this drawing system, but a system in our mind where we have drawers where we put in things which which come to us. And I don't, and this is a very natural thing we do. There's nothing bad about it. It's a natural, we would say out of a spiritual context, it's a, we speak of a material conditioning. We are an eternal, we say we're an eternal spiritual soul, a spiritual spark, who at the moment is in this body. The, we wouldn't, if my name would be Peter, it wouldn't be, I'm Peter and I have a soul, it would be the other right way around. I'm, I, I'm a soul and at the moment I have a Peter. So we are at the moment in this body. And um, now I lost track, where did I go from here? So, um, <clears throat> yes, in the, and then we speak, we say that in this, in, in this world, with this material body, we get some, we get conditioned, we get influenced by this body, and our soul falls kind of asleep. It forgets that its its eternal position as being a part of God. It's kind of sleeping. This we call then a, a, we get kind of conditioned. And so, for this body, being this body, it's totally natural to make these drawers. It's like kind of a categorizing system. You organize, like you said, you do. You organize things also internally. And it has actually a deep-rooted psychological function that we do that. We want to control. We want to con it's a function of our psyche to control things. Something, an impulse comes to us and we try to categorize it in order to, to have understanding and ultimately to have some security. It's, we're constantly filtering our world trying to create certain security. Something funny happens, something strange, we have the book, maybe we don't quite understand, we have the drawer for the strange things I don't quite understand, we put it in there. So some security is there because we don't really understand it, but we have, I don't understand this situation drawer, so I can put it in there. At least some security is there. And from a spiritual perspective, it's, um, it's said that the, th the, the, the thing which is same for humans and, and, and animals is eating, sleeping, mating and defending, or fearing. Defending is also translated as fearing. And Srila Prabhupada often mentioned that, that if, if as a human we only stay on these four levels, we're actually non-different than in animal life. Like all our modern society with all their 
We have super nice beds these days. You can just have a working colleague. She had her bed made by a, a professional carpenter with full massive wood. It was three and a half thousand francs. I was like, oh, three and a half thousand francs just to go to sleep in the night. Okay. So we have very sophisticated arrangements for sleeping, for uh, eating. Uh, our whole ha our house and flats we have are ultimately just supporting those <coughs> simple four s principles which happen often very easily and uncomplicated in animal life. And the, and the, 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 the mental capacity, uh, the mental um, or the psychic, psychological urge to control is actually based on one of those of that principle of uh, of defending of fearing. So we fear to lose control, we fear to lose security. So we are always categorizing. That's our whatever. Often it ha and, and the thing is, usually it happens totally unconscious. We just impulses come, impressions come, and it, it happens immediately. And it's even said when we when we look and go into the world, there's like I said, ninety percent of what comes to us we don't even perceive consciously, like that. But subconsciously, it, it's constantly. That's a computer processing process. That's why we need we need to sleep. We need rest because the brain the whole day is working, working, working. So we need to get the sleep to recover. <coughs> um, so there, it's actually that uh, the so-called reality we perceive, we think to perceive is actually a subjective interpretation of all these imp impulses we get. And so maybe some of you heard of that, um, uh, the tradition of constructivism. They strongly say that, that whatever we, we, we perceive, we construct, we construct our own little reality. Like a very good example, who of you is in a relationship, a partner or a married or a partner? Do you remember saying to him, you always do this, you always leave your glass at the same place, you always leave your dirty socks at the same place, you, or something like that, this, this always, that's already an interpretation, because sometimes your partner may do it and sometimes you may not do it. So we already give our own interpretation of something what happened there. And we're very good at that. And ten in tendency, another a human mind thing, we we perceive the negative things much stronger than the positive ones. And a side note, we are very yeah we are very uh, the, the let's say the the picture for that is often our mind is a bit like a fly. They like to go to the the dirty spots and stay there. But our mind should become like a honeybee and go to the honey and stay there. So in psychology he said if something good happens, like if you have a nice drink, oh it's such a good drink, stay there with this good feeling at least for 20 seconds to make an imprint in your consciousness and it will it will provide well-being. And that's a, it's a training of the mind to stay there, the positive things will happen because we will anyway stay at the negative things. So we need to give some counterbalance. <coughs> Go back, going back to the topic. So the so-called reality we perceive with our senses is often very much subjectively or personally interpreted uh, how we perceive, and the rea the actual reality, what we believe to perceive, is actually here and not outside. And this is a, um, and this is also connected to our, uh, we uh, we create drawers. Kind of our reality is all in these drawers, and we can go and back and pull these drawers, and we maybe create some new ones. We kick out some old ones which don't prove true. So it's all uh, very much interpreted, very much subjective how we uh, perceive things. It's also said in spirituality that. Uh, they speak of raga. They, it's often translated as attachment to material things, but the literal translation is coloring. 
we color something, oh, this will give me enjoyment, this is nice, this will not give me enjoyment, that's not nice. We, we, we put our color over it. <coughs> So, um, for spirituality, my uh, input I'd like to give that it's very helpful and very refreshing to make this, this interpretation or this categorism system to make it conscious what's going on in our mind, to be more conscious like we we often say amongst devotees, before you want to be God or Krishna conscious, you need to become conscious as a person, introspective also. Because one other um, effect of putting everything in drawers, you can say we conceptualize things. Which I believe when, you, when one practice spiritual life, it's a tendency to read things from our books, to hear things from other spiritual teachers, and we place them in our mind as so-called already, ah, understood, good, I understood it. But ultimately it's just a concept, we have not re realized it. So we got to get an information, we understand it in our head, but the actual realization of really experiencing it, feeling it, tattva, the truth, there's still a gap. So if we don't make this gap consciousness, we can become, it can become very dry in spiritual life or more extreme you can have the tendency to become fanatic or dogmatic because if it's only a concept and someone comes with a with a, an argument against it it can be a great attack and then we have the tendency to defend one of the four principles which doesn't differentiate us from animal life <coughs> So I think it's very uh, important if one practices spiritual life to, to when you, we, we take knowledge from scriptures, from other spiritual people, uh, that we are aware, ah, okay, it sounds logic, it makes sense to me, somehow I feel something for it, but um, where am I on this continuum of just information and realization? Where am I there on this continuum? So then the question may be, what is then actually reality? If everything is just, can go total extreme, if everything is just an interpretation of my mind, well, what is reality then? Like I'm looking at you, you're looking at me, but this might be not reality. <laughs> can go really into extremes there. And I think many philosophers have broken their minds on that question. Um, and here, as I chose this verse, tattva. Yevanyas chasmi tattva bhaktiam abhijanati. One can understand me in truth by this practice of bhakti yoga, of devotional service. And the understanding is that God or Krishna, everything is connected to Him. That um, if one understands God or Krishna, all the, all the understandings will reveal themselves. So, but there's a very deep point in this uh, verse spoken by Krishna that one cannot understand this tattva or this reality by our own mental strength. It happens by revelation. It happens by uh, the kind of the power, the higher power from above. It comes to us. Has any one of you, I believe many of you, made this experience, no? We don't understand something or we kind of think, oh, it it's, makes sense, but hmm, is that really true? Um, we are, uh, like I think a very good example is we are um, we chant the holy name of Krishna what we did before the Mahamantra and there one of the kind of a 
essential uh, foundations of that chanting is that that name we chant is non-different, said to be non-different of the person Krishna. There is this uh, Sanskrit verse, Binatam Nama Naminaho. The name and the named are non-different. So in chanting, it, it's said that we chant the holy name to experience Krishna in the process of chanting. It's some qualification or some, there is this bhakti required. If you chant the name with, with bhakti, with love, with, 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 which start first aspect of it as attention, we give our attention into it. Maybe a more feeling approach is that we we say, oh, I have, I have nothing in my heart which I could offer which could attract you. I'm really dependent. This, this feeling of dependency is another aspect of bhakti where we, we call out for the name. Prabhupada used to say we chant the name like a child calling for his mother. It's a, it's a feeling thing. And we hear this is like, it's information. We get the name and the named are, are non-different. And it's, a, it's an understanding which we don't get from living in this world. I can say the name of my best friend who's somewhere away. I can say his name again and again and again, and he's not there. We don't make that experience in that sense. But by uh, practicing chanting the holy name, I believe most of you made an experience. At least there is something special there in chanting that holy name. And sometimes some glimpses come through, like, like the, there must be something there which, 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 is, which is empowering, which is enlightening, which is very uh, satisfying in the heart. So it has some indication, hmm, that might be right. So it's an experience. And uh, sometimes you also have this, um, in, um, in meditation, in practicing the the practicing spiritual life, we suddenly we get like an insight, and it, and it kind of. Once I, I had a, a special experience when I just uh, came to the temple. I was a young, we call him bhakta at that time. Um, I I needed some peace because temple life can be quite intense sometimes. So I went up into the forest. It was summer, and I took a book, uh, book with me. I think it was first canto of the Shrimad Bhagavatam, and I sat down at a nice grass patch, and I was reading. And suddenly this book opened up. It started speaking to me. It was like, it wasn't in information no longer. It was really like touching me. And suddenly I re it was speaking about the, the spiritual soul. And suddenly I kind of felt that all these grass I'm sitting on, they're all spiritual souls too. And I stood up and I was like, oh, I didn't know where to step anymore because it was like, oh, they're all spiritual souls. I'm stepping on them. I can't do this. So that was like, it was, it didn't come from me. It was like, it was coming from above. It was something revealed. <coughs> oh, good, there's water. <coughs> so, I believe many of you can tell a lot of stories of little revelations or big revelations you had in spiritual life where you feel this is now something coming not from me, from above. And the thing is, we can, we can say, okay, this morning I will chant very very good, the Maha Mantra, the Holy Name, the Hare Krishna Mantra. I will really be focused. I will really give everything. <clears throat> and we walk away from chanting in the morning and our heart is still dry like a stone and we feel quite miserable. And other days, we might be tired. We might be not in the best mood. Okay, today I'm... Okay, what, I give my best. I just do it for you, Krishna. And suddenly some reciprocation comes. It comes from above. So it's it's nothing mechanical. It's not you can't you can't uh, you can't uh, force Krishna to come, or you can't do it by your own strength. And I believe also many of you had this same experience. You can't do it by your own strength. <coughs> so that's this the, that beauty and power of bhakti. But also you. You can't, you can't cheat, you can't do it. Our endeavor is there, definitely. And actually, we, in this month, we really remember also this endeavor. Maybe you can see uh, on the altar, we usually, the, um, 
these two um, deities are usually not there. One is Mother Yashoda, Krishna, uh, Krishna's mother, and the other is a small uh, Baal Gopal Krishna. And she binds him in a rope. And the, she takes rope, and it's every time it's two fingers too, too short. And she takes more and more rope. All the gopis come and bring her more rope, and every time it's two fingers too short. At one point, she made such a big endeavor, so Krishna said, okay, I let myself bound, bound by love. So that's the, the teaching out of that instance that we need endeavor as one finger, but we need the revelation. We speak of mercy, mercy of God to come. And for me, very prominent again and again in spiritual life, my endeavor is the endeavor for mercy. If I endeavor to make, if I chant, to chant focused rounds, Krishna might not be able to, is usually not attracted. My endeavor to call out for his mercy, like a, like Prabhupada says, like a child calling for his mother, then sometimes it becomes, you can feel Krishna's reciprocating. So it's the endeavor for mercy. And um, <clears throat> so to come back to this um, understanding of, of tattva, that's what we in the Krishna tradition, what we suggest, what we, what we offer is that to understand this reality, we don't do it by our own strength, we do it by our endeavor, of course, we try as, as good as we can, but we wait for that revelation, for that mercy, to get some clear sight. And for this, what I would like to offer you to you today, it's very helpful to become conscious of this categoriz categorizing system we have in our mind. That we don't just... At the beginning of spiritual life, everything is very uh, very blissful, we're very open, but in tendency we get a bit... Um, how do you say... Over the years we start to do things a bit mechanical. And we have also we have the, the Hare Krishna temple drawer, and then we have the liberal devotees drawer, we have the conservative devotees drawer, we have the, the guru drawer, which might be he's a guru and a sannyasi, that's why he's advanced. Doesn't have to be. Or he's just a young bhakta drawer, he's not advanced. Doesn't have to be. So we tend, and for this process of of Krishna uh, revealing himself to us, it's very helpful to be conscious of these drawers and even to try to put these drawers aside. <coughs> the, um, the process of uh, understanding uh, spirituality is also given in the Upanishads. You, so you heard of the Upanishads. They speak of this process of Shravana, Manana and Nididhyasam. Some of you heard of this? It's a common thing, it's uh, cited often. So Shravana is hearing. We hear from a spiritual teacher, we hear from the scriptures, we hear from other practitioners. We hear it and then we do Manana, we think about it, we remember it. We take it up into our mind. But then the most essential uh, part of it is actually this Nididhyasam. And again, Sanskrit here is very interesting. Sanskrit is a very complex and a very deep language. There's a lot of words, it's very hard to really translate them into German or English, like one of them is Dharma. Every one of you heard Dharma, but it's hard to really to speak what is Dharma or Rasa is another word. It's hard to really give the, 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 the accurate translation. So, Nididhyasan, nididhyasan it has the prefix Nidhyay which is a desiderative form. That means if you want to make a, a term that it should express a desire for something, it, it's used this form. And it's, it, it actually literally means desire to understand. You do everything to understand this. So one of those parts is definitely our endeavor, but also our, really our endeavor in a, in a bhakti yoga spirit that we actually we take shelter in God, we, we take shelter with Krishna so he, he helps us understand this. Which is prayer also, which is our attitude when we when we perform meditation, when we chant his names. 
And also there, if I put my spice into it, I believe it's also you the desire to understand this introspection and also this becoming conscious of what kind of drawers am I using in my mind, which actually may, um, which actually may also um, disturb my connection to God, or may close me up to actually to this to receive uh, these these higher revelations, because we conceptualize things and we, we, we stay there. And we, we don't, and we block the flow of this mercy, actually. And then it's actually, it's also said in, in Bhagavad Gita, in the Shloka 518, Pandita Samadarshana. The, the, the truly learned, learned person Samadarshina, he sees everyone the same. He sees them as spiritual souls. So, also if we too much put people we meet into these drawers, we forget they're actually eternal parts of God, of, of Krishna, of, of, uh, of, of God. I'm usually, I, I don't know how comfortable you are with the name Krishna, so I also use God. So I'm saying like that. With us, Krishna is God. It's we refer to that. I'm also not too happy about the word God because it's also very in influenced by hmm, how to express this, not to say wrong. It's influenced by a tradition, Christianity, which had a lot of changes inside and where a lot of different concepts slipped in and, and, and spiritual topics were taken out. So we we have it. We have. If we speak about God, the tendency that it provokes, by total, naturally wrong understandings, through history, what happened in the name of religion, not only Christianity, everywhere in, in religiosity. So, I prefer. I like to use the word Krishna in that sense. <laughs> <coughs> so yes, um, coming back to this. I can't tell you this is reality, I'm not there yet, but I'm trying to uh, uh, inspire you to uh, what uh, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita to get to know this tattva, this reality. And for this, I believe it's very healthy to be open, to be fresh and not to put everything into drawers and to into categorizations and concepts, especially concepts, can be very detrimental in spiritual life. And on a, on a every day to day level, I believe in relationships, in human interaction, if we can put this drawer making a bit to side, it will become much, much easier and much less complicated. I believe also in human relationships, a cause for m most of the conflicts is that we we put people into drawers. You always do that, or you never do this, or or the worst is you are the 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 the. the. It's really a heavy thing. We 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 pronounce someone that he is like that. I work a lot with that in uh, parent coaching. Parents they come and they say, oh, "My child, he is a." How do you say that in English? I'm a Schulverweigerer. I don't know. He's a my my kid is a, a school um, Verweigerer. The school. Um, don't like school. He doesn't. Yeah, much more than that. He okay. Who, which kid likes school? Hate school? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> I mean, often kids don't like school. But uh, he, um, I don't know the word English word for Verweigerer. No, no. Rejecting. 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 Yes, exactly. He's a school rejecter. So that's a very heavy thing a parent could do to, to kind of label their child as he's a school rejecter. It's heavy. So actually what the kid is doing, something is there that he's not getting up in the morning going to school. It's just... And if we make that conscious, aha, so he's, he's not going to school, and my mind he immediately wants to think he's a school rejecter. No, that's just my mind, it's not my kid. So that can be very helpful for, for human interaction and things like that. Projection, yeah. yeah. I spoke about how, how our mind interpre interprets, puts their subjective interpretation into everything we perceive. 
So yeah, um, if you have any uh, comments or questions, I'd be very happy to hear. <coughs> Mm -hmm. It's okay. Um, you said that it's it's good when we start to to put these uh, drawers that we stick everything into drawers mm -hmm. a little bit aside. Mm -hmm. But sometimes this is not so easy because I think a lot is in our subconsciousness, mm -hmm. and so there is it is like a speicher stored, stored yeah, and. Is it also the best way, in this way, that we pray to Krishna to come away from this, to put things into these drawers, or can we do it otherwise? I think it's, I mean, also if you become conscious that we do it, that we often put things into drawers, it's not so easy to just... Oh, thank you. <laughs> to, to just say, I won't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can learn, but mm -hmm. is it a good way also to pray to Krishna that we can stop with that? Definitely. I, be, I'm, I believe it's natural that we do that. It's a, a function of this psychic body we have, we do. like, And like I said, we create a certain security with it. So it's natural. And I think a big step is already done if we can make it conscious what's going on and then we can pray to Krishna or I think it's also um, another place of Bhagavad Gita it's it we, we become also like observers it's like good for spiritual life to be able to step aside with things happen but we are stepping aside and we may even act upon it and we may in human interaction we may act wrongly due to this tendency but it's very powerful then also if we can say sorry yeah. and usually saying sorry and say oh please forgive me I, I just it just the, the 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 film was rolling I I couldn't stop it at the moment I'm very sorry and I'm trying I'm trying my best but this also there's a certain power comes like to 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 heal from it to work on it yeah Yes, mm -hmm. and the more we realize mm -hmm. that we do it, the more we can come away from it. Yeah. Because yes. we can prevent somehow that it doesn't happen again. Maybe. Yeah, yes. And I believe <coughs> we say like having human interaction or a partnership is very uh, demanding. We can also look, it's a very wonderful training ground for that. <laughs> of dealing with it, of con making things conscious, of working things out. And I believe we are readying ourselves for the relationship <coughs> with, with, with Krishna, with that. Yeah. Thank you. And then the second question is, um, I, I'm not so long in Krishna consciousness, but I think there are some things I realized already. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, when someone is asking me something about the scriptures or in, in general about Krishna consciousness, sometimes I can't explain. I feel it's in my heart and I, I have realizations, but I can't explain it to others. It just mm -hmm. doesn't come out. Mm -hmm. Can you say something to this or is it just... I know that very well. I'm not too well finding words for sometimes, even the things that are not spiritual, just like what's going on in my mind. I'm a bit slow on that. And usually I say, oh, I'm, I'm still looking for the words now. I'm, I'm a bit slow on this. Usually I used to come in very embarrassing situation. I used to blah, blah, say something and that, oh, actually I didn't even mean this. And then the person was like, you know, like, what did he say now? And this was a bit, you know, or especially with my wife, you know, you say something and actually I'm still looking for the words and she takes it literal and she, and you hear it 10 years afterward, you said that time there. <laughs> so no, and yeah, you can say I'm not too fast, I'm not, I'm still looking for words. The thing is also, that's also what I'm experiencing with, with, with like coaching parents 
as long as you think if you read these concepts like what what do I have to say now usually it turns out wrong and you you offend them you hurt them you they don't they don't feel understood but when you with your when you're authentic with your when you're here with yourself the words just come yeah. Yeah. Okay. Of, often I'm not there <laughs> I have to really work on it but that's, I think it's all about also in Krishna conscious spirituality. We need to become real. And real means what does Krishna conscious, what spirituality means for me. Not for anyone else, not even for Prabhupada. What does it mean for me? <coughs> and speak from there. And that's real spiritualism, in my, as I may say this now. Yeah. Okay, thank mm. you. Mm -hmm, please. Yes, um, I have a question about misconception, which you was talking that we are sometimes perceiving things not as they are. So if you are trying to, you know, there are misconceptions and if we want to come out of misconceptions and we are trying to get knowledge, but then the problem of knowledge is that we are filtering the knowledge with our misconception and we may think okay i just came out of the misconception but you are shifting just from one misconception to another misconception mm -hmm. so how how you can come out of the misconception with knowledge <laughs> if you have we have filtered you know welcome to spiritual life <laughs> i my experience is it's like uh, we don't eat uh, onions, <laughs> but an onion has many layers, and we gradually peel off the layers. And the misconceptions become more and more subtle. So the things I believed, or I believed to think f true 20 years ago, at certain points kind of said, mm, it wasn't that true. It was quite a, a big concept that I built up in my mind. Sometimes it was quite fanatic also. Yeah. So they slowly drop away. And as we say, Bhakti Maam Abhijanati Yavarnas Chasvi Tattva, we try to offer service with love to Krishna, and Krishna will take care of them. He will gradually, gradually take them away. If you want. If you want to see. It's another strength of our human mind. It's actually it's quite crazy. We, we, we don't really choose to believe what, what is really true. Oh my god. We choose to believe what we, what we believe is true. That's very strong. We, we become very irrational there. We just choose to believe what we want to believe. So if if you want to believe what you want to believe, you may stay in your concepts for eternity. Not eternity, but... So it's really our our honesty, our trying to be authentic, to really, yeah, Krishna, I want to know, even if it hurts sometimes. <coughs> I want to ask you, um, are there situations where uh, thinking with drawers is helpful? <laughs> Good question. Yeah, thinking with drawers is helpful. Ah, yes, I believe we, we need those drawers to, to kind of orientate ourselves. The problem is if we, if we are not aware that we have drawers and if we just stick to the drawers we have, if we don't create new ones and kick out those who prove themselves wrong. I think that's, that's the problem. But we, we, are, we are using those drawers, like you said, we orientate, we organize ourselves with them. It cre creates a certain security. And, on, and it's said that when one is totally in love with God, very Krishna consciousness, that will be the ultimate security. If I die, if I live, if I'm here, wherever, no, my, the main thing I can love, I, I, I feel Krishna and I love him and I'm connected to him, then nothing really. No, no insecurity anymore. But on to there, we need a certain orientation, a certain, a certain security. That's just human. It's just natural. 
that will be my take on it. Thank you so much for this lecture. Um, although I was a bit late, I just got to hear about this, um, that it is actually bad to put someone into uh, like a box, right? Mm -hmm. And um, as you told, it's also a security, but so often we just put people into boxes, but it doesn't, also it's not... Um, like the right box you do, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, you have a misconception. So I was wondering if it is actually a say, also it is if it's actually necessary to do that, and why ac actually it happens. Because when we know the source of, as the the reason why it comes. We can also like put it away when we understand how to um, how to decide if it's good to like be safe and and when to just reject this um, thinking. Mm -hmm. So your your question is how to arrange with this putting people in boxes. I'm not, not quite sure what you would like to ask. Um, yeah, actually there were two questions, like uh -huh. why it's actually, uh, as why we are doing it, mm -hmm. and um, when you're like in a situation, sometimes it's good for you and sometimes it's not good, and mm -hmm. how to um, decide when you have to um, reject this box mm -hmm. thinking. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is definitely, it's good, like, if a, if, a, <coughs> if you feel threatened by someone or it's good to have, this is the, the person who is not doing me well box and you, you go out of the way, you keep distance. So it's also, it's, you're protecting yourself. So that's important. I just I believe it's important it's good to become aware of this psychological processes and especially there where we have some not nice thoughts about other people where box boxes are connected with certain negative feelings that we we um, <coughs> we become aware of that and say maybe there's a more mature way of seeing this person like, I, I like the sentence of Prabhupada, I built a house where the whole world can live in. So that means for me, every person can, can, uh, can practice spiritual life, Krishna consciousness. May he be whatever, whatever crazy gender orientation he may have, he can come. And I, I respect him for he will come because he wants to know something about spirituality. <coughs> or whatever, or he may come. That's why some some amazing devotees, they go and, and have, uh, they go and speak with uh, people in prisons. There it's good, Hare Krishna. There it's good, we have, they may be, they may have done some really bad things, and it might not be good to put them outside of the prison, because it, you don't know what's gonna happen there. But still, if they're interested in spirituality, even he, can know, get to know spirituality, and there's a certain there's a prison box. You create a certain security. There's a certain consequence also to what he did. But at the same time, if he's interested in spirituality, he should get to know in that context. <coughs> I think w when you ask this, I always remember Prabhupada built a house where the whole world can live in. So whoever walks in that door, whoever I meet, he he has a right. If, he's, if, he, if he inquires, if he's interested in spirituality, and I don't put him in boxes, ah, maybe this person not. He's a bit funny. He's a bit funny, gender orientated. Maybe him not. No. I, I often joke, I say, a uh, joke, I mean it actually quite sincere. If, Nit, if Nityananda would walk in to our temple room, I guess we would 
kick him out being a Sahaja. The way he looked, the way he acted, the way he practices Krishna conscious. I think it, for most, for a lot of us devotees, it would be too far out, and we would say, "Oh no, proper, please, please go out. This is not proper." Okay, I close my mouth up. <laughs> no, is that? Um, just wanted to make s one comment. Sometimes um, we know that we should not judge mm -hmm. other people, but what we learn also in Christian consciousness, what is very important is to um, differentiate. And when we um, become more and more Christian conscious, we should like make this differentiation: who is like an enemy of Krishna, who is like a friend, who is innocent, and how to treat also different to um, different um, levels of Krishna consciousness. So I think this is also an important point that we know actually Krishna is God, we should serve him, then with whom we should serve and who we make friendship and to those who we should help and preach and approach it in this way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's said in, in scriptures. My personal take on that I say it a bit um, provocative now. Oh, he is, I'm one year older in Krishna conscious. I joined one year before, so I should now preach to him. He's my, I'm my senior. So I believe that that gap of me or some ever being senior to other new in Krishna consciousness is, we over make that, we make that gap a bit too small. Uh, sorry, yeah, a bit too small. I think a lot of devotees are really on the level of our friends, even if I joined 20 years before, <laughs> practically speaking. But yes, we, we, and especially we should be kind to new devotees, <coughs> just be kind. And um, speaking of friends, to friends you don't, we don't, to friends you have friendship, you don't preach to them, you have share friendship, friendly relationships. And yes, very important, when we perceive, oh, this devotee is spiritually advanced, we should be eager to associate with him, to ask questions, to get, to get into his aura in, in that sense, because we get inspired by it. And that we, it's a very good point, we also need to perceive if someone is advanced. And not just if he, if he's guru or sannyas, maybe nothing, but is he, is he inspiring me in Krishna consciousness? And he may be a, a new bhakta who joined two weeks ago, but who knows what he did before. <coughs> so this openness we should always have. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. So next program is our Sunday feast. I think Rasa Shah can say something. It's great, Jacob Paul Prabhuki. Thank you very much for speaking something on spirituality and the drawers we have. So now the next program is uh, Prasharam, a uh, vegetarian feast. But before you go, I want to give you two information to notice for next week. We have two festivals coming on Tuesday. There's a festival called Govardhan Puja. It's a very joyfully performed festival. It's a festival of food, of prasadam, of sweets, of playing. It's a very fun festival. And so I invite you all to join. It's, we will start in the evening or in, in the afternoon at 4.30. And uh, please come with a big appetite. There will be a lot to eat. And on Friday, there is another very important festival, especially for the Krishna Consciousness Movement. It's the disappearance day of our founder, of our Guru, Srila Prabhupada. And for his honor, we are going to hold a celebration here um, for the things which he has given us, presented us, for all the Krishna Consciousness he has gifted us with. And this program also starts at 4.30 in the afternoon. And all the program you can also find outside in the 
in the vitrine were with the detailed program. So I wanted to inform that. And now, um, please have a good uh, feast. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.